Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4 and to Fallout 4's final DLC trailer, Nuka World. As always, in this video we're going to deeply analyse the trailer and hopefully pick it apart and point out some things that you may have missed. And if you do see anything in the trailer that I didn't cover, please feel free to leave a comment explaining what it was that you spotted. And before checking out this analysis, be sure that you have actually seen the trailer itself. Of course we're going to be pausing it a lot and it could get pretty annoying if you're trying to watch it for the first time. So I'll put an annotation on screen right now or you can find a link to the video in the description. With all that aside, let's pop off the cap and neck this new Coca-Cola. First of all, park safety rules. Haha, <laughs> it's pretty funny, safety. So it opens with a shot of just panning back from that screen on, I don't know what that is, some kind of new Coca-Cola protectron, a new Coca-Tron perhaps, a Cola-tron even. And we're introduced to the two mascots of the park, Cappy and Bottle. In this next shot, we just see in the background there, Kitty World, with this nice Disneyland-esque castle. So on the shelf there, we see the new Coca-Cola victory. Making a solid return, here we have what could very possibly be a new piece of apparel or clothing, this light blue t-shirt that has bottle on it. A nice Nuka World style shirt. But what's wearing the shirt is the most horrific thing I have ever seen. A mechanical mannequin. Absolutely horrifying. In this shot here, we can see that this roller coaster has come off its rails, so I don't think we will be using it in this DLC. But here in the foreground, I think is what is two new types of plants. We have this, uh, we have this really brown looking one with the kind of light pink flowers, and then next to it is a much darker, rootier looking plant with these kind of turquoise flowers. So that's something interesting to take note of. Down here we have the world of refreshments, which to be honest, doesn't look too refreshing. There is of course a myeloke, which I think might be a new one, which because as we can see underneath, under its shell, it's kind of glowing like a light blue. And from memory, I've never seen that before. I've seen light green, but not light blue. So this might be a quantum lurk. Ockley doggly, here's where it starts getting interesting. So we have this raider right here in the foreground, and as we can see, he's wearing completely new armor. Although it is very reminiscent of raider armor in the standard Fallout 4, it is actually a different design completely. It also has this kind of unique white, brown, and yellow paint job. He also has some kind of metal eye patch. That's pretty sick. Not cool, I mean sick, it's disgusting. Now before we leave this guy, he is actually holding a brand new weapon. Everyone who tells me about this weapon says it's an AK-47. I don't know if they're right, and I most certainly know that I do not know. It's some kind of assault rifle looking thing. So there it is, a brand new assault rifle. Unfortunately, it's an awful angle of it, but we do see some more later on. Now if we look a little bit in the background on this banner here, there is the sigil of the disciples, one of the raided gangs, or sects. So that's something to take note of, and besides the glorious background, there's nothing else really in this shot. Okay, let's just go back a little bit and watch that again. So we've got Hoop Shop, where you can throw balls through hoops. We've got some kind of whack-a-mole. Looks like red rockets poking out of holes, but they normally go in, which is strange. Now the character is holding this kind of like baton thing to club those red rockets back down into their holes. Now I don't know if this is specifically used for this game or if it's an actual weapon that you can get. That would be pretty damn cool. Also, on the blue strip, there seems to be A-C-Y and then an exclamation mark. A-C? Facey? Spacey? In fact, it probably is spacey, as there is a galactic world, and these also seem to be some kind of rockets coming out of these holes. But hopefully this is a new type of weapon. And right at the end of the shot, if we look right down the bottom, we can see it says one token, and there's a little slot. Now because that one token text is so high resolution, that means it's been made specifically so you can read it, which they don't do for a lot of text that isn't used for anything. So this does make me think that you might need to get tokens to use these games. Could be wrong, but something worth taking note notice of. And I've just noticed that on the side here there is some kind of arrest looking thing. Now this is probably where that baton thing goes that you're hitting the red rockets into the holes with. Which is fair enough, makes sense. The weird thing is there's a combat knife on there. Maybe you can take the baton off and replace it with another weapon and then take the baton away. I do not know, but it is strange. The next game is Atomic Rollers, where you just chuck a ball. Yay! Now you will notice on all the games that there is a scoring system, and I really do hope that this is utilised to give you awesome rewards. <clears throat> you need items would be pretty sick. But given there's tokens and a scoring system, I think there's going to be something really fun and really rewarding for us to do with these kind of mini games in the theme park and Nuka World. Here again, we just have some more games where you're shooting these little pigs, and I'm pretty sure this person's using a pipe pistol, which isn't anything new. But again, I really hope these games are utilized to give us some awesome rewards. Now we have a shot of some power armor with a brand new power armor paint, the Nuka Cola paint. After seeing the Vim power armor paint in Far Harbor, I knew with no doubt in my mind that they would implement a new 
you could call a power armor paint in Nuka World. So, uh, why don't you stick that on your power armor? Here we just have a Nuka Galaxy sign that has this rocket on a little rail going back and forth. Although, originally when I did see it moving, I was getting flashbacks of the Bright Brotherhood from Fallout New Vegas. And I must say, the bottom of this rocket looks pretty damn glowy, like there's some real action going on down there. So who knows, perhaps someone will blast off on this rocket. Now this is a real trip. This is roller coaster through what I assume is Galaxy World or whatever the hell they're calling it. But there's asteroids and I don't know why, but there's a bunch of Mr. Handys knocking around in the asteroids. I don't know what their purpose is and I don't know what the purpose of this roller coaster is either. Now in this show, we're actually in a moving vehicle. And to be honest, I can't tell if we're just off the ground or if we're on the ground. So I don't know if this is a bus, a train or a tram, a monorail. I can't quite tell what this is. But a big people moving vehicle that we can actually go in? That's pretty cool. Now I love this shot. This is just a nice big shot of, uh, I can assume, most of the park. Although there's heaps of cool stuff in the background, I want to have a look at the foreground here. We can see this plant right at the bottom. Again, I think it might be that plant we saw earlier with the blue flowers, but I'm not sure. But for a plant in a wasteland, it does have some vibrant colors, which is making me suspicious about what it is. Also, next to this tree stump over on the right, we can see the ass of some kind of cal creature. And unlike Brahman, this thing doesn't look mutated or affected, but we'll see more of that later on in the video. In this shot, we just have this absolute abomination. I do not know what it is, but I do know that I'm gonna shoot it right in the mouth. Now it could just be the rat storm making this look absolutely creepy, but I think this might be some kind of haunted house. This could just be in Kitty Kingdom. A lot of the buildings in Kitty Kingdom have those spires that we can see on this building, but again, it looks really kind of menacing. Also on the front, there is a light shining and you can see some big letters on the front of the building. Unfortunately, I cannot make out what it says. And then of course we get this straight up shot of Kitty Kingdom. Lollipops seem to be a pretty good marker of Kitty Kingdom. I don't know what's in this cage, but there's a cage down here and there's just like a yellow thing in it. Might be a minion. After all, it is Kitty Kingdom. Judging by the figure, there is also a female raider leaning on this corner here, and next to her seems to be some kind of huge humanoid thing sitting down. Looks like they're playing a sitar, which I can pretty much guarantee they are not. But yeah, I don't know what that person's up to. Through the gates in the background, we can see a giant ice cream cone. So, uh, right back to your family about that. Now, above the cage, there is a little banner, and in pink paint, there is the sigil or symbol for the Pack Gang, one of the groups or factions of raiders in Nuka World. It's really hard to make out, but it's basically like a dog skull with some long fangs. There's nothing groundbreaking in the shot, but it does give us an insane idea about what Kitty Kingdom looks like. Just absolutely crazy and looks a lot like Disneyland or something like that. This is just ridiculous and I love it because of that. It just looks absolutely wild, which is I think something we have all been waiting for. But in this shot, it's quite clear that these ghouls are painted different colors almost. The one closest is yellow, which I suppose is a kind of standard ghoul color, but the one behind it is obviously got blue paint on it, and the one behind that has obviously got purple paint on it. I don't know if these are to represent the factions that the ghouls come from. I don't know if this is just a new skin for some ghouls that comes with the DLC, or if this is some kind of crazy game. But again, all this color and theme park styled stuff is just adding this crazy fun element to this DLC. Here we get a pretty good shot of Savari Zone. And by the looks of it, it's going to be pretty wild. As we can see, it's lots of overgrown stuff. There's a butterfly here, which as we know is absolutely wild. Now, if we do take a look over to the right though, there is a bunch of cages. So I think there might be something to do with animals here. There's also a big lion statue, not that that's a real animal, but it is hinting that there's going to be animals nearby, right? That combined with the cages, I think we're going to see some pretty metal stuff in Safari Zone. There is also this treehouse base, and an actual tree with green leaves, which is quite interesting for a Fallout Wasteland. I don't know if it's a real tree, or if it's some kind of building that's built to look like a tree. Either way, it's pretty interesting. Here we've got Conan the Barbarian, with some brand new clothes on, again with the line, and again emphasizing on the cages over there that seem to have been overgrown. And this guy's new clothing or armor is incredibly reminiscent of Grognak the Barbarian's clothes. So here, if we look from the back forward, Deathclaw, 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 what the hell is that head? Is this some kind of like alligator crocodile claw? I don't know. As always, I could be completely wrong, but I don't think we've seen whatever this is before in Fallout. Could be some super pumped up version of a gecko. I don't know what this is. It doesn't look too friendly though. Luckily, I'm Australian and can handle these bloody gators and crocs. Anyway, behind this crocker claw is a bear. It seems to be a statue, I think, yes. But again, just animals. 
letting us know that this place is bloody wild, mate. Okay, let us pause this here. First of all, let's talk about this oxen. Doesn't seem to be affected by any of the radiation, doesn't seem to be messed up, no boils, no patches of radiated skin. It's just a nice, shiny black, healthy looking ox. Could be a buffalo, I don't know anything about cow breeds. Is a buffalo a cow? Again, I have no idea. But that's cool to see a brand new creature, and again, this could be the thing we saw earlier that was next to the stump and just had its ass sticking out of that bush, or that could have been me trying to take a shit in private. Either way, it's cool to see this brand new animal. Now, in case you didn't notice, the character in the trailer is holding a fluoro yellow baseball bat with two jets <laughs> strapped onto it. So instead of a super sledge, we have a super bat. Now, this could mean absolutely nothing, but if you notice, underneath the paint, it seems to be white or shiny at least instead of a wood color. This could mean that we can finally use an aluminium frame without just having to have a plain old boring silver bat and we can actually paint it. That would be great. But even if none of that exists, this is still a damn awesome weapon. A super bat. Here we have a very clear and gorgeous shot of the galactic area zone planet. I don't know what they're gonna call it, but here it is in all its galactic glory. Here we are introduced to what I do believe is a brand new type of power armor paint. I've had a quick look through my power armor paint collection and cannot find any that resemble this one. In this quick shot here, we see a brand new type of Mr. Handy, or in this case, probably a Mr. Nuka. Now the head of it is of course different with this kind of square Nuka vending machine shape to it. Also, we can see it has a saw blade, but it also has these two fans. Why would something like this need fans? Well, if you notice on the fan at the back or on the right, it has this canister sticking off it. Interesting, but if we take this back to like the very first frame of this shot, we can see that from the fan, it's actually shooting this kind of pink mist. What that does, I mean, I really have no idea, but definitely something to watch out for in Nuka World. Now, before we talk about that thing, on the ground here, this seems to be what I think is a dead robot. I can't tell what kind of robot it is, but it looks like there's some canisters, some red bits, some gears, some cogs, and some legs coming off it. If anyone can tell what kind of robot that is, please let me know. Okay, so now let's talk about this walking vending machine Nukatron robot thing. Doesn't seem to be shooting at anything, but it is quite clearly shooting out these kind of very slow, glowing, blue particle effect grenade things, blowing the absolute shit out of the footpath. Again, no idea what this is, but it doesn't look like something you want to get hit by. Cryo weapons, maybe? I don't know. It doesn't look icy enough. It looks really particle and like alien technology laser stuff. Could be fireworks. Dunno. This probably means absolutely nothing, but up here on the sign, it says Nuka something. And it's in yellow. And there seems to be a yellow bottle next to it that's half cut off by the building. Now normally, Nuka yellow is Nuka victory. But underneath Nuka there, it clearly does not say victory. It looks like an F. F-A-M-A-Z? F-A-M-O-Z? I cannot read what it is, and it's setting me insane. If you can tell what that is, please let me know. Nuka something. And it's yellow. This is when we get for the first time a good view of the area known as the Wild West. West. And I gotta tell you, at this point in the trailer, I'm, I'm literally smiling because this looks damn cool. In this next shot, we get a look at some lovely lady in some brand new clothes, some brand new apparel. They seem to be chaps and some kind of really cowboy looking shirt and vest. Very interesting looking stuff. Okay, here we get to see a brand new creature. It seems to be a cactus crossed with a worm. That's cool and all, you know, some cactusy, spiky looking thing. That, to be honest, I don't want touching me at any point. But what's really cool is the weapon that the character in the trailer is holding. What the hell is that? It looks really, really clean. Like the metal on it doesn't look aged at all. The blacks on it look really clean. There's no dirt on it. And it looks quite futuristic with the wires coming out of it. And also that big bottle with that pale bile looking liquid in it. And of course there is then the pipe going to that pump on the side into the gun. I don't know what this thing is. Hopefully it's a really damn cool new weapon that we can use. And it's not just some gun that like sprays bug spray onto these weird bugs. Either way, Way, it looks damn cool. I really like that they've gone out of their way to kind of design new weapons. Thank you very much. Now there's a whole bunch of cool, colorful stuff here, but what's really interesting is, and I didn't notice this before when I was talking about the yellow Nuka sign, down here there is actually the Nuka sign, the yellow one, the one that I couldn't read. As we can see, it says Nuka Orange, brand new Nuka. Unless, of course, it's been in previous games, which I do not remember. So I am pretty sure a new type of Nuka-Cola drink, Nuka Orange. So there we go. 
Now if we remember back towards the start of the video, there was a shot of a Mylok in a tunnel. There seemed to be some glowing blue water in there and the Mylok looked like it was glowing blue as well. Well if you look at this turquoise sign right in the center of the shot, now featuring a river of Nuka-Cola Quantum. So that's probably exactly what that was, an underground river of Nuka-Cola Quantum, making of course the Mylok's glow blue. Here in this shot we have two raiders and I think for the first time in the whole trailer, I don't think either of them are wearing anything new. However, up here in the top right, what is this stuff? It looks very scientific. There's a big tank with a bunch of pipes and cables and very kind of futuristic, advanced, expensive looking scientific equipment going into it. Hopefully we get something really freaking cool with this. Some kind of quantum experiment gone awry. They tried to infuse human genetics with Nuka Orange and Carrot Top came out. Who knows? Now, before we talk about the people in this shot, over in the back on the right, we will see a symbol and this is the symbol of the operators. Nothing to add beyond that, just so you know, that's the damn operators. Now this guy on the left here seems to be wearing some metal armor and although it looks very reminiscent of old standard Fallout 4 armor, I do believe that it is actually new. New, some newly designed metal armor. He also seems to be wearing some kind of jumpsuit with an interesting pattern on it. The pattern goes from the shoulder all the way down to the knee. So I am assuming it is some kind of one piece jumpsuit that he's wearing. Now this lady over here on the right, very interesting. She is definitely some kind of main character. Her armor is far too interesting and clean to be just some standard pieces. That's definitely a unique piece of armor right there. She also looks too well designed to be just some random raider. Let's start from the top down. I do believe that's a new type of hair being introduced into Nuka World. Got a kind of like 80s look, but then there's the ponytail coming out the back. It's got like the long puffy bit on top with the fringe coming down. It looks really cool, but I don't remember seeing it before in Fallout 4. She has this gorgeous matching suit with houndstooth pattern on it. It's got these incorporated pieces of metal bits on it, and she also has three bullet belts. Step aside Rambo. And I can't tell if right on the bottom, if that's part of some metal armor on her leg, or if she has her fingers ready to pull out some big weapon. But all in all, really cool shot. This character looks really interesting and she's pretty cute. Okay, here, although they look kind of rough, they are all in brand new apparel and clothing introduced with Nuka World, at least for the most part anyway. These hoods are very menacing. The faces are hidden. And as we can see, they've got like some shiny new gloves on. And as interesting as that is, the lady on the right here seems to have a slave collar and that is very interesting. So we might be revisiting slavery in Fallout. In this shot here, we see the operator's symbol again on this banner here. We also see the operator's symbol painted on Bottle's face. Now here comes that gun again. We're gonna be seeing a lot of it in the next couple of minutes. It's kind of reminiscent of a pipe weapon, an AK-47 and the syringer all mixed together. I don't know what kind of gun this is or what kind of gun it's based off, but with my purely Hollywood knowledge of guns, it does look very AK-47. And this lovely lady here, I do believe, is in some new apparel and clothing. Now we get to some settlement stuff, and there's nothing too amazing that I'm going to talk about here. It just looks like they've added some new settlement things that you can build. More settlements. Oh, cannot wait. Nothing interesting here. What? Just can we have an electrified paddle bat? I don't know. My faith in Fallout 4 is slowly being more and more restored. So after reducing my character's base stats to one, it has a base ballistic damage of one. And I'm just joking. But seriously, judging by those stats there, ballistic damage of one, energy damage of 10, I do believe that this electrified paddle ball is a joke weapon. It's even been modified with the electrified ball. So if it didn't have that, it would have a damage of one. And here we see the player using it on an enemy doing absolutely nothing. Although it did knock him back a little bit, so maybe that's something to take note of. And again, this guy seems to be carrying that gun that I cannot identify, but we do get a really good look at it in this shot here. Okay, so for the big main part, like the story, like being able to join a raided gang and take over and kind of rebel against the Minutemen, this is for everyone who's interested in that, these next couple of shots. As we can see, a bunch of raiders charging into Sanctuary Hill, and although it doesn't necessarily show us them taking over, the implications are incredibly obvious. Especially given that the player character is running in with the raiders, so you can join the raiders and build its settlements as a raider faction. Besides the entire crew's incredibly interesting new clothing apparel helmets, I would like everyone to have a look at the weapon that the player character is holding. What the hell is that? Again, it looks like that AK-47-ish weapon, but look at the paint job, what's going on? Apart from like the baseball bat in the base game of Fallout 4, we've never been able to paint a weapon before. So this 
is either a unique weapon that they've actually put a unique skin on, thank god, or you can now modify the actual appearance of a weapon. Very interesting. Okay, let's take a look at everyone. So this guy right here on the left, I don't know if that armor is anything new, although the kind of woolen stripy sleeves and green top definitely is new. Uh, they seem to have pink hair, which I do not believe you can do in the base game of Fallout 4, so that should be brand new as well. That mask? What the hell is that? Looks like a kind of ho hockey mask with bug eyes, but then with a big old kind of toothed beak coming off it. Not too sure what that is, but I don't need to be sure. It just looks damn cool. Up on the parapet thing there, there is some radar with a purple head. Boring. The guy next to him looks like they have a Khan helmet from Fallout New Vegas. Very cool. And this person down here has a green mohawk. And again, I don't think that haircut was in the base game of Fallout 4, but it definitely was in New Vegas. But the face, that's what's very interesting. From the side, we can see that it has like a big red clown nose on. Now, this is either a clown nose you can stick on or a mask that you can get. Either way, we're going to be able to put a clown mask on our character. Now, that's cool. Aliens. Oh, yes. The galactic area of Nuka World has aliens. But before before you get too excited, these aliens aren't real. If we take a look at the neck and also where the torso meets the legs, we can see that they are obviously robotic aliens as there is a huge gap and you can see the kind of spinning mechanism. Also, if you just watch the clip, they look super mechanical when they move. They do have some alien blasters though. And you know what's really cool? These actually have a completely different skin to the alien blaster in the base game of Fallout 4. It looks like that these are based off the alien blaster in Fallout 3. So hopefully these aren't just toys or props. Hopefully we can actually get one. Even if it's not an actual alien weapon, hopefully we can just get a gun that looks like this and actually shoot stuff and is usable for the player. Now if we have a look, they seem to be shooting that blue stuff that that Nuka Cola vending machine thing was shooting before. Those kind of blue grenades or fireworks. Well, if you look at the particle effects coming out of these guns, they seem to be identical. I don't have an explanation for it. It's more of just an observation. Now I've watched this bit along with the whole trailer many times, but this one bit, I'm not too sure what the hell is going on here. And after saying that, I just figured out what the hell is going on here, although I do not know what the purpose of it is. So this person is standing in a Dodgem Kart arena, and in case you don't know, Dodgem Karts have this huge pole on the back, go up to the roof, which is a huge net of electricity, and that's how the Dodgem Karts get power. But this guy is in a suit of power armor, and he's got one of those poles going up to the roof, and as we can see, he's getting electrified. I don't know if he's being punished, if he's getting killed, if he's powering up and he's actually the strongest boss in the game, I don't know what he's doing. Whatever it is, it looks damn intense, and this might actually be a unique set of power armor, as it has a skin that I've never seen before, because it has that electric netting from the roof of the Dodgem Kart Arena. If we look on the legs and such, there's also lots of cables and pipes and microchips, so hopefully this is some kind of unique electric power armor that we can get. In this next shot, we are introduced to a new enemy, some kind of bug. It looks absolutely horrific, I don't know what kind of bug this is actually meant to be, but any bug that's big is the worst thing on Earth. Uh, on the right though, in the player character's hand, we can see a new weapon, or at least a new modification for a weapon. Uh, if anything, it would be a combat knife modification just because it's quite short. But yeah, some kind of new melee blade. Looks pretty intense. It actually looks like a huge razor blade. Here we see some wizard dude vanish. But something I really want to highlight, which he's already done, is the face. If we go back to the very first frame of the shot, we can see that his face is like a glowing green skull. Now I thought about this for a while. It could be a mask or it could be a ghoul. If you think about what the ghoul glowing one would look like in the dark, this is pretty much it. Quite skull-like face with glowing bits. And of course, green. Uh, but the fact that they designed these new clothes, these like magician's clothes, I'm gonna guess that we can get them in the DLC. So I'm very excited for that. Again, then we're introduced to more enemies and more bugs. These are flying ants, absolutely horrific once again. It looks like the drawers in my room. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you look at my posts from five months ago. Anyway, brand new enemies, flying ants. Uh, they seem to have these new ants nests, which I assume the ants come out of. But what's really interesting is we kind of get, for the first time, a big shot of the wasteland part of the Nuka World DLC. Yes, that's right, it's not just the amusement park, it's actually Wasteland as well. And trust me, I've been in Fallout 4 for about 2,000 hours. I know every inch of it. And what you're seeing in the background is not anything old. This is new Wasteland. So that's really cool. I mean, nothing about the Wasteland looks new and cool, but it's just cool to have some new Wasteland. Here we see some more ghouls, and again, some painted ghouls. Don't know what's going on there. Maybe these ghouls from Kitty World ate all the lollipops, and now they have some fluoro skin. I don't know what's going on. But what we do see is a 
moving ride. I don't know if you can hop in it, but it is most certainly moving. What's, what's kind of weird is the wheels aren't on the tracks. In fact, the center of the vehicle or carriage or whatever it is, is balancing on one side of the tracks. But we do see it bowl over a bunch of ghouls, which is always fun. I don't know if this is gonna be practical in any way, but it is cool that they actually put something moving on these tracks. And with that, we end up with the final shot of the teaser footage, which is this here, and after deconstructing that trailer, there really isn't anything new in this shot. But again, up at the end, we get a pretty good idea of the scale of the DLC in terms of map size and it looks pretty big. So after spending the last four hours purely watching this, my thoughts for the DLC are good. This looks fun. I haven't quite been able to put my finger on it, but nothing in Fallout 4 so far has really hit the nail on the head. It hasn't hit the spot. You know when you sit down after a long day and like drink a soft drink or a beer or something and you go, Ah, that hit the spot. Well, nothing in Fallout 4 has done that yet, but this, and this isn't some pun about drinking new cola either. Just quite seriously, after watching this, it feels like that this is the content I wanted that's gonna hit the spot. It looks fun. It looks like all the game designers just went, yeah, fuck it, let's go absolutely mental here. And that's what people want. We want crazy stuff. It's bright, colorful, fun. I mean, an electrified paddle ball, a baseball bat with two jets on it, a death claw with a crocodile head, ghouls in fluoro paint, Nuka Cola Quantum Mind, you know what I mean? I think you'll all agree that this looks much more interesting and we actually want to play it. Remember the room with the spinning spiral with the ghouls on it? I mean, come on, this looks damn fun. That's kind of like where Far Harbor Mist, it was really dark and grim, making you base your choices for quests on actually like kind of philosophical grounds. Whereas Nuka World just looks crazy and fun and you can just do whatever the hell you want while wearing some goofy stuff, take over some settlements, and then run over a bunch of fluoro painted ghouls in a roller coaster. But after watching this trailer and analyzing it thus far, I do feel like I'm going to have a lot of fun and just genuinely enjoy playing this DLC. Now with all of that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching and if you did see anything in this trailer that I didn't cover or you know the answer to any of my questions, please for the sake of the entire Fallout community, leave a comment below and explain to us what you discovered. It would be greatly appreciated on my part and I think I can speak for everyone when we say thanks for letting us know what you found. Now unfortunately what we didn't get in this is a release date. It has been rumored that the release date is the 30th of August, but that hasn't been confirmed nor has it been denied. It could just be a placeholder date, who knows. But again, thanks for watching, be sure to leave a comment and I'll see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.